All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health. Michelle Krosmer and Dr. Hashmi here. And Dr. Hashmi, can you explain to us um, what is hyperparathyroidism and how does that um, relate to kidney disease? And what's that confusing relationship between calcium, phosphorus, PTH, vitamin D? Um, can you explain that for us? All right. So let's go ahead and start from the basics first. So the word hyper means too much of, para means next to, and thyroid is your gland in the neck going on. So parathyroid is the glands that are right next to your thyroid gland. They have nothing to do with your thyroid gland. They're just called para because they're next to it. Hyper means that you're making too much. What are you making too much of? It's the hormone that your parathyroids make, which is called PTH or parathyroid hormone. Now your parathyroid glands, what you want to take home is that there are four small glands. And those four small glands, they really control the calcium in your blood and they also control the calcium that's going to end up in your bones. And as you think about this, it gets really confusing because there's like 10 variables to understand. But I'm going to make it very simple. You need to know three things. Your kidney doctor, your dietitian, your entire renal team is going to harp about these three things. And those three things are calcium, vitamin D, and phosphorus. So when we talk about what controls parathyroid, that's it. That's all you have to worry about is the calcium, the D, and the phosphorus. So then you'll hear terms like, I have primary or secondary or tertiary hyperparathyroid. What do you want to know about those? So primary is one where essentially the parathyroid gland, you know, one or more than one could be larger than normal. And essentially it's gotten a life of its own. It's making too much of the hormone parathyroid. So we call that primary. Secondary, on the other hand, is there's an external factor. For example, there may be a deficiency of vitamin D, or there may be a deficiency of the active form of vitamin D. We'll get into that in a second. But essentially, if you have chronic kidney disease, or you have end-stage renal disease, you're going to be dealing with secondary hyper parathyroidism. And tertiary is, is seen in patients oftentimes when they get a kidney transplant where even though they got the transplant, things should be okay as far as phosphorus and vitamin D and so forth metabolism goes, you are still producing too much parathyroid going on. So now the one that's important to really understand is always secondary because that's the one that we all deal with with our patients and that's the one that patients sometimes don't understand. So the basics is, let's start with vitamin D. Healthy kidneys, what they do is they take the vitamin D we get from the sun, hits our skin and goes in. Kidneys take that vitamin D, which is the inactive form of vitamin D, and the kidneys convert that to the active form of vitamin D. Now keep in mind, your body uses both the inactive and the active form to do so many different functions. So that's why your nephrologist or your dietitian might say, you need to take over-the-counter vitamin D, and then we may even give you the active form of vitamin D on top of that. Because remember, active and inactive are two separate things that have a multitude of functions going on. As your kidney disease gets worsened, with time, the ability for your kidneys to turn the inactive into the active goes down. And as it does that, what your parathyroid says is, wait a second, I'm not seeing enough calcium inside the blood. I need to try to make myself put out more of the hormone so that I can regulate the calcium levels, the phosphorus levels going on. So essentially what the parathyroid does is, it acts like a muscle. It starts to grow and grow, hoping that it can shoot out more parathyroid to bring the imbalance back in line going on. So when we start to talk about things like how do you treat hyperparathyroidism, that's secondary. It's very simple. There are three things you want to focus on. The first one is if you're vitamin D deficient, just good old regular inactive form of vitamin D will tell you start taking oral vitamin D over the counter going on. And your doctor will give you either a prescription or say, just pick some up from your favorite retail outlet and start taking it. Now, after we've repleted the vitamin D inactive form, your PTH, if it's still not in line, we're going to tell you now you need the active form. And that's where you'll hear names like calcitriol or hectorol or zemplar. All of these things are nothing more than the 
active form going on. But here's the most important part. The most important part is, is when Michelle comes to you and says, look, you got to stop eating all of those junk foods because your phosphorus is too high. The reason we care is high phosphorus will directly drive your parathyroid to do what? Act like a muscle, start to grow and start to produce too much parathyroid. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, okay, that's all great, but why do I care if my parathyroid is high? The reason you care is because it regulates the calcium in your blood and the calcium in your bones. So it will start to break down your bones to release more calcium. You know those hard earned bones, you don't want to get osteoporosis as you get older. If you don't control your phosphorus, the parathyroid gets overactive, starts to break down the bones, and now you have all sorts of kidney bone issues. What are those called? We call that renal osteodystrophy going on. It's fancy big words, but essentially saying control your phosphorus, replete your vitamin D, and if you need it, we'll give you the active form of vitamin D. And there you have it. Well, thank you. That explains it. And <clears throat> I think that is, I'm glad that you brought it up because I hear a lot of times people will say, oh, my doctor took me off my oral vitamin D supplement because I'm now starting on this active vitamin D. And for some people that might be the case, but oftentimes both the oral and the active form are beneficial and necessary for some people because they do have different roles and different functions. So um, thank you for explaining that. I think that this is another one of those videos where people could benefit from watching a couple of times. And um, we hope that helps clear things up for you and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.